Alrighty, here we are. Um, so what we're going to do is import your character, which is Travis Guy here. Obviously I've just set up everything basic here, my flip side tools and all that stuff. So then I'll expand this, select him, make him humanoid. And so that's done. Now what I'm going to do is extract the materials manually here just for fun. Um, I'm not sure if when Flipside extracts uh, the textures and stuff it misses some textures on occasion and they will show up later after you do the bundle build and they'll show up magically in the texture folder but in this case I'm going to extract them. There's no harm in doing that manually. And you put them in a folder called uh, you put them in a folder called textures then they'll kind of sync up with uh, the flip side import <laughs> and there you go and it's got the normals as you see which had to be fixed so fix them and now we want to extract the materials the same way. I know you know all this, but not necessarily. We, we don't usually do it manually, but uh, I'm just doing it in this case just to make sure we get everything. So you can say the uh, avatar has changed once we did the import, so it looks like it's supposed to look. But now we still have to import it into Flipside, so we hit import. And then let's put a light on it as usual so we can see the reflections and stuff. Yeah. And we'll go have a look. And what I do is turn off all this stuff. Oh, not that, but the grid. And I reduce that down to zero so it's easier to see. So now we want to deal with the hair. Now, one thing for later is just um, this isn't something you're going to do right now but as you can see there's there's hair in here and, and often you can move it <laughs> in this case you cannot um, but if you ever want to get rid of it and you'll see why I'm doing this later uh, we'll go to cut out and then just get completely rid of it and you'll still see the outline but really it's not not going to be visible but for the initial part of this. We'll ignore that. So there it is back again. Now the thing you want to do is go into your textures folder and look and find the opacity uh, um, texture for, and really it's for any any object is going to have an opacity texture. Some make sense, some don't. Sometimes you're going to find a, uh, a fishnet kind of thing going on and if you use the opacity then you can see through it and it looks proper. And that's the, s the same is true for helmets and stuff where you've got a visor. They often have the opacity that will help you um, turn the visor clear. Anyway, for in this case, we're just dealing with hair. And as we can see here, there's hair opacity, which is, um, was, is nice. It's not necessarily always there. Sometimes you have to go digging for it in the textures folder or back into the fuse export textures. But the one thing you have to do if it comes in looking white on black uh, basically the black is supposed to be transparent so on a JPEG which is or this is a PNG actually so we might be able to just hit that and nothing happens mm. I'm not quite sure uh, PNGs normally can come in with with uh, the um, uh, transparency already uh, kind of running in this case it doesn't seem to be doing that so we'll hit the grayscale basically that takes anything black and it makes it transparent so you gotta take that grayscale and apply and then this will change you'll see that now everything but this stuff is, is transparent so that's all set to go so you go back to the hair go in here and the, you'll find in the albedo that is actually the blonde color and the streaks and all that stuff but what we want to do is get rid of that um, we're going to take the opacity, which we just made transparent and proper. We're going to drag it in there. And then you're going to say it looks pretty goofy. That's because we've replaced the actual text.
texture for the hair, which is here. And uh, there's nothing there, basically, it's it's base. Now what you can do, actually, is see, you can color it. So that's, that's kind of cool. Um, but if you want to use the original, you take it and drop it into this detail, albedo. And now it still looks goofy. So what we want to do is change this. And you have the option of changing it to transparent and then fooling with this, which produces, it can produce a, uh, a fairly realistic hair effect. There are issues with it. And you find if it's really bright like this, I'm not quite sure why that is, but you can tone that down this way. And as you can see, it looks, it looks, you know, uh, if I could show something else there, you know, it starts to look pretty, pretty realistic within the limits of whatever hair model they're using. I didn't put any uh, double-sided shader on this one, so it's probably going to be a little better with the double-sided shader on. Anyway, so we'll go, just go back to the hair. Now the problem with transparency is that when you get overlaying transparencies, like if there's a window, if he's looking through a window or something and that it's transparent, this will all go nuts and uh, it won't look great. Um, and sometimes it's like real wispy and you can see through it, so that's, that's not always great. All you do is go and change it to cutout and then futz around with the cutout uh, here. You can do it here. Thank you, dear. I'm being served breakfast. Isn't that nice? Um, you can futz around with the cutout here, and as you can see, uh, it kind of gives you the individual strands. Now, they're very hard, but still, I mean, from a distance, it looks a little better, a little softer than, you know, the normal chop-chop kind of effect. So should I get rid of this outline? Um, what that? Anyway, anyway, so uh, then you can play with this cutoff thing and just, you know, get it to where it looks decent. It's not square. This is what you were complaining about, I think. So just get it to where it looks kind of strandy. And that looks a lot better. And then you can go back in if you want and you can overlay a color on it. So, you know, it's pretty flexible that way. So that's that's about all there is to it. So it's just really putzing around with the uh, the material for the hair and making sure that you've got this opacity or transparency. It'll it'll be either called opacity or TR or T. You'll see it in there for different models. I think it'll be consistent for Mixamo stuff, um, but that will allow you a lot of uh, leeway in doing that stuff. Um, and the other other thing, now that's you're done. You can export that, and it'll look a lot better. Or play around with it, of course, and uh, just make it look the way you want. Now, the thing I wanted to show you, uh, in addition, is you're not stuck with just the mixed mole hair. Although there's, you know, there's lots of it, so that's good. Um, but if you want to get rid of the hair, just drag that over like I did before. Or in here, you can drag it over like I did before. Um, and now what you can do is, uh, where is he? Oh no, it's in my, I'm sorry. I haven't put it on the desktop. So now you can go and export hair from Daz, just the hair. You just get a hair asset, bring it into Daz, and then export it. And it'll come out as an FBX, and then you can import that. Eventually, I don't know why these imports take so long sometimes. Hair, hair, hair is funny stuff because it, it has a lot of uh, meshes and stuff and I think that takes a long time to import sometimes. So now it's imported and uh, so it's right here. So what you can do is find the head and so it's there. And this is what the hair looks like, and it's very blocky, of course. So then we, well, I shouldn't do that. I should extract, the, <coughs> pardon me, extract the textures for the hair. 
and I don't know, we'll just put it in, into the same, no we won't, we'll put it in this so I can find it easier. So it'll just show up here in the assets folder. And then we'll extract the materials into the same folder. Or maybe it's not, maybe it is putting it somewhere, I don't know. No. <laughs> anyway, so um, if you don't lose it like I just did. So it, uh, it's, it's finding its way here. So this is the thistle stuff. And uh, as you can see, it comes in with a transparency map and it's just called T7. There's another one here because it's made up of multiple meshes and it's also got the cap which is what sits on the scalp um, but these are the longer strands and basically you can multi-select all of these and change it to grayscale again alpha is transparent and then hit apply it'll make all these transparent I'm just doing this just to show you because I'm not going to go through the whole process again um, so now we can go back and now we found the head and we will just drag the thistle hair onto the head you'll notice it's not there that's because it's way up there and it always is in about the same place so you can just drag the Y factor for the hair down and plunk it and it usually goes pretty close um, to where you want it it's usually a little a little behind and when you get down uh, to this point it's better to use the use the uh, uh, positioning tool it's a little more precise you'll find it, it will always be a little bit far back so you can move it and you can resize it and do all of that stuff um, to make it look good so that way you have uh, the option of using all kinds of different hair and once you've got that in you can go into the hair shape uh, if you can find it and again you'll see that there are several materials involved and each one may have its own uh, opacity so well, I don't know where this one is let's see that one's fairly invisible but all of these would have to have the opacity attached so that's the main one there so again we'll just go in and find the opacity which we just did yeah. and uh, I don't know what it is I don't know which one it is but uh, if you hold down control and click this sometimes you'll see something that'll tell you that it'll match up in this case it absolutely does not so let's just say it's this one here so it's the same process uh, as you can see that makes it look a lot better um, it's a little hard to see with the other stuff there but uh, and then you can just go drag the original hair and stick it in there and that will give you your coloring so let's try maybe this one as well I don't know if these are the right ones but you basically have to go through and um, either experiment or just find you know which ones are which and then you can play around with them they're set to transparent uh, I don't quite know why but anyway, you check that and you can make them transparent or go back to cut out like we did before. And as you can see, you can then modify all of the different components of the hair. And in this case, you absolutely do not want to use transparency. <coughs> when you've got multiple components overlaying one another, the hair will just look like a hot mess. Once you get it into flip side, it'll just be a big bright ball of craziness so you don't want to do that so always use cut out when you can you'll get a little rougher effect but I mean if you could use transparent hair it would look really really nice but in this case you just can't do it so uh, just go to cut out and then just adjust um, so you get it looking as good as it's going to be and that's that's all I'm going to do today so uh, uh, I love the stuff you're doing, by the way, and hopefully this will just bring it up another notch. So have a good day.